Well, good morning, everybody. It is so fun to be here at Kids Church today. And we have a bit of a challenge today. As you can see behind me, I have my trusty buckets and some brooms, which you might also have at home. But what we're going to do today is we are going to enter the cube and have to step over these two buckets blindfolded. Do you think that we can do it? I don't know. Pastor Allison is here with me and we're going to see who is better at entering the cube. We get three chances to see who can step all the way over. Oh my gosh, back I can't see a thing. <laughs> like, can like you a, breathe? I really, wait a minute. I can't see a thing. I can breathe. This is good. Okay. <laughs> Seriously, this is this. <laughs>
you've done Death has lost its grip on me I won't fear the night You have brought me life By your blood I am redeemed Because of who you are Because of what you've done Death has lost its grip on me Yeah. 
Imaginations kids, it's Gabby here, and I'm here to bring you the message. I thought I'd do it from outside today because guess what? It's springtime, and springtime is probably my favorite season. You know, I love being warm, and I really, really love summer, but spring is my favorite because there's flowers everywhere. These ones smell really sweet, and they have a pretty color. And even look, there's flowers on this bush behind me. I'll pick some off. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work. You can't really see it, but. They're purple and they're pretty. And the bees are out. The bees love all the flowers. I love spring because my birthday happens in spring. I'm turning 20 this year, so that's kind of soon. I love that all my plants give me new leaves. Look, this is a new leaf. And they keep growing and growing when it gets warm. So spring is a really good time for them. And I love that the sun comes out. I love that I get to wear my short sleeves again and shorts. Who loves that? I don't know about you, but I don't like being stuck in winter clothes. I like to wear um, shorts and a t-shirt. I can wear thongs again. It's socially acceptable. People don't look at you funny. And I can put on my big hat and go outside and play. I can do some gardening. I can play with my cat outside. There's so many great things about spring. But you know, there is one kind of iffy thing right i love it and it doesn't work for me at the same time and it happens in summer too the sun comes out which is great but you know i have a bit of a problem when it comes to the sun sometimes right i'm out in the song sun for just the perfect amount of time and everything's great but sometimes i stay there for a little bit too long happens a lot when i go to the beach and i come back and i look a little bit like a salmon my skin is bright red it's burning, it's peeling. I don't know if that's ever happened to you, but ask my friend Sarah, it happens to me a lot. So what do I do? I put on my protection. I put on my hat, protect myself from the sun. What do they say? Slip, slop, slap. I put on a shirt. I put on my sunscreen. Let's put some on now, shall we? I feel like it won't come out very well though because I haven't really used it since, uh, since summer. Ooh, there we go, made a funny sound. Put some on my arms, right? All protected a little bit on my face let it soak in before you go in the water that's what my mom used to tell me and look I'm all protected from the Sun I've even got my towel here if I was ready to go to the beach maybe I could put it on like a little bit of a cape extra Sun protection right now I'm all protected from the Sun I could even put on sunglasses but now that I'm protected from the Sun if I were to take all these things off the sun would still be there, right? Yeah, the sun is still there. Even though I'm more protected, 
I'm in the shade, it's cooler here than being out in the sun. The sun is still there. It never goes away. And when I take my hat off, it's like the sun instantly hits me. There's no little delay, is there? It's there, straight away. And you know, you might be thinking, Gabby, what are you talking about? We get it. You love spring. You love summer. You love to be warm. I understand. But this reminds me a little bit of our story today. Our story is the prodigal son, and you might have heard of it before. So we're going to watch it, and then I'm going to tell you why I'm talking the way I am. So Jesus told them this story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, Um, excuse me? I want my share of your estate now, before you die. Okay. So his father agreed and gave his son his inheritance. A woohoo! A few days later, this younger son packed all his belongings. See ya! And moved to a distant land. And there he wasted all his money in wild living. Huh? About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land. Ah oh, man! And he began to starve. Hey, you! He convinced a local farmer to hire him. Thank you. And the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so hungry that even the food he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. But no one gave him anything. Finally, he said to himself, At home, even the servants have food enough to spare, and here I'm dying of hunger. I know. I will go home to my father and apologize and ask him to take me on as a servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son. Sir! His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet, and kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast, for this son of mine was dead and now has returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Wow, I love that story so much. Do you know what? That story is actually just like us and God. You know, our God is a heavenly father who loves us no matter what we do. But sometimes, we can still turn away from him and go our own way. We can be like the prodigal son and live our life completely ignoring the father. Until suddenly we realize that we need him and we need to ask for forgiveness. You know, sometimes that's all it takes for us to realize that we've done wrong and to say sorry and to repent to not do that wrong thing again. But sometimes, we realize that we've been living far away from God. But we think that God has left us. You know, it feels like he doesn't want to hang around us anymore. And so he went away. You know, today is Father's Day. And maybe you think of God just like your dad. And I know a lot of us have wonderful, fantastic dads who love us so much. But for some kids, maybe even you, you might not have a dad that's around right now. So sometimes when you think about God as your heavenly father, it can feel a bit sad and painful in your heart. You know, I want to tell you right now that God is a loving dad who will never, ever leave you. Like ever. He's even better than the best dad. That's right. He's better than your dad, and he's even better than my dad. You know, the sun never goes away. Just like God never goes away. We can distance ourselves from the sun by putting on our sun hat, all right? I've got my hat here. <laughs> and we can distance ourselves from the sun that way. But you know, God is always there. When we distance ourselves from him, he stays, just like the sun stays around. 
You know, he's just waiting for you to take off your sun hat, to say sorry for your sin, so that you can be close to him again. You know, I love that the sun was celebrated when he got home. Look what I have. Wait. Whoa! Streamers, yay! I love these. Okay, anyway. Um, I love that the son was celebrated when he got home. His dad didn't yell at him or get angry, but he ran up to him and he hugged him and he put a ring on his finger, the Bible says, and put sandals on his feet. And he threw a huge party. Did you know that the Bible talks about throwing a party when people come to God and ask him to be their best friend? It's true. So... I'm going to invite you right now, if you want to be one of Jesus' best friends and you want there to be a party in heaven, or if you just feel like maybe you've been away from God for a while and you want to come back, I'm going to pray a prayer right now that you can pray with me. So it goes like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love us so much, Jesus. I thank you that you died for us, that we can come back to you and that you forgive us, Jesus. I thank you that we can be like the prodigal son and turn around and that you are like that loving father who comes and sweeps us up. Jesus, I thank you that you're never angry at us and that you always want us to come back to you and that you throw a big party for us. Jesus, I wanna be your best friend right now. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me, you can email us at this email right here and tell us because we would love to know. Or if you come from another church, make sure you tell them. Well, Imaginations Kids, I hope you have an awesome week and I hope that this encourages you and bless you. And remember to give your dad a big hug today on Father's Day. See you later.